How far can, will and should one go when restoring, enhancing and even colorizing old film footage by means of artificial intelligence? This is the key question that we will address in this video. For nearly two years this channel now has been using AI to improve old film footage. The developments with AI will not stand still, but are expected to fulfill an ever increasing role in our society. How much is already possible, and will be possible in the near future? Will there be any limits to it? And what are the ethical aspects? Ever since artificial colorization was added to our toolbox a year ago, the popularity of this channel has grown more than tenfold. Before that, during the first 15 years, there was hardly any growth worth mentioning. Clearly from an amusement point of view, enhancing and especially colorizing old film has a lot to offer. The feedback that we get on this channel shows that viewers can associate themselves to a much larger degree with events that occurred a century ago. Colorization adds an extra dimension and viewers realize that the world never was in black and white. From an educational perspective, film enhancement also has proven its value. However, some historians are already objecting to the use of AI with old film. In order to counter their objections, we decided to make this video. To start with, let's take a look at the more conventional video enhancement tools. Although motion stabilization is not really AI based, but a fairly straightforward software filter, it nevertheless is a very important instrument for film restorers, because it adds so much to viewer appreciation. Wobbly footage causes headaches, and soon most viewers will lose interest. In order to stabilize film, the software needs some wiggle room. This implies that the center of the screen is slightly zoomed into, causing the edges to fall outside of the screen. Dependent on the degree of motion instability, the zoom factor has to vary. Up to 10% of the original visible areas can be lost if the instability is large. However, there are techniques that can even limit or even fully compensate for the loss, for example by copying edges from earlier or later film frames. Motion stabilization is not without controversy among historians. A Dutch archive called Beeld en Geluid is opposed to motion stabilization, because to their opinion it is historically not justified. Here is an example on the left of their recent restoration of the Westerbork film. On the right is the additional stabilization that we applied. To our opinion the loss is negligible, and also less relevant because in nearly all film footage most events occur center screen anyhow. Here is an example of an AI enhancement that we recently did of a fairly poor quality film about the Dutch town of Edam a century ago. Among other, the original wobbly black and white footage has been motion stabilized, noise filtered, dust and speckles electronically removed, and contrast and brightness enhanced. Please especially note the effect of an applied histogram filter that brings details forward in very dark areas that nobody knew they were still there. Do you think there is any reason for historians to object against such restoration? I would hope not, particularly in view of the fact that the software did not add anything. All the details were already there, but simply hidden in the dark areas. Colorizing black and white film with modern AI software is a more contentious topic. Contrary to the previous cases in which visual information is already present in a film, either visible or partially hidden, the colorizer needs to learn what colors people, animals, buildings, nature, objects and other normally have. For some objects the colors will always be the same, like for example the American and British flags, but for other objects the AI can only guess. All it has to go by is the shape and the gray levels of the parts of an object. For example half the flags of all the countries in the world have three banners. The gray values in the black and white film do not hold enough clues. Very intelligent AI could in the future determine what country might be involved on the basis of other, more precise clues in a film and subsequently color flags, uniforms, buses, trams, trains or other nation-specific objects correctly. There are many traps the AI can fall into. For example, in a film about many countries, it will be hard to determine when during a scene change other countries become the main topic. Colorizing a black and white photo with all the flags in front of the EU building in Brussels will always go wrong. Thus there will always be drawbacks and impossible tasks for any colorization AI to perform. The question is, at what level of accuracy will historians start to accept the output of colorization as suitably historically correct? What are the main tasks that video AIs can fulfill? 
It's important to realize that AIs work on the basis of neural networks that are trained to a great extent to learn as much as they can about everyday objects, locations, events, people, animals and much more. To a large extent this learning is done on the basis of trial and error. The more data is fed to the AI, the more it learns, filtering usable, accurate data from data that is superfluous, wrong or not applicable. To a certain extent, AI developers don't even know themselves precisely how the AIs work. It is mainly the improvement of the training and learning algorithms that they concentrate on. Because videos AIs have learned a lot about how things should look, they are able to correct mistakes in poor quality video footage. Jagged edged window frames or building contours can be corrected by making them visibly more straight. Out of focus or less detailed shapes of people, animals, signs and other objects can also be improved. There is a limit to how much can be achieved and the danger exists that the AI overshoots its objectives by starting to fantasize details instead of portraying a realistic picture. More about that later. Speed correction is another important piece of software in a film restorer's toolbox. In the early years before around 1930, film was shot on hand-cranked film cameras at a much slower frame rate of between 12 to 18 frames per second compared to today's 25, 30 or even 60 frames per second. In order to make the film play back at the correct speed, additional in-between film frames need to be somehow generated. There are three methods of doing so. The first is to simply duplicate frames every third or fourth frame. However, this causes the playback to stutter. The second is to blend frames, whereby generated in-between frames are an average between the previous and next frame. The third method is the most contentious, being so-called frame interpolation. A computer algorithm then artificially generates in-between frames and uses AI to do so. Such frames use information from an entire film sequence to regenerate frames that appear as smooth motion film. This technique is also used for doubling frame rates from 30 to 60 frames per second. Speed correction has the advantage that the human brain gets more visual data to process and also gets 40 to 80% more time to do so. The end result is certainly more pleasing to the eye, especially because the slapstick effect so common to old film no longer occurs. Historians do not like frame interpolation because the AI creates information that was not present in the original film. If an historian really wants to take a close look at the contents of individual frames, then frame interpolation is not recommendable. To demonstrate that artificial intelligence can go completely over the top, we use the well-known picture of Barack Obama that was gradually reduced in quality in four steps. This is the original photo of Obama. In this first step, the quality is slightly reduced, and here is the result. Here is the input for step two, and this is the result. In step three, the quality is even further reduced. This is what the AI does. In the last step, we reduce the quality even further. The result bears no resemblance whatsoever to the original. The AI hasn't even bothered to enhance the background, but has only performed a highly fantasized face reconstruction. Another possibility with artificial intelligence is to try to recreate moving images from still photographs in an attempt to, for example, bring back a deceased family member back to life. This technology is still in its infancy. Sometimes the AI results are good, but very often disappointing, particularly because the motions look unnatural and unlike the motions and behavior of the original person. If you've never known this person, then probably the first reaction is amazement. But for familiar persons, the results soon become disappointing and even boring after having watched a number of such AI attempts. If further progress is made with this technology, the possibilities are almost limitless. Long deceased singers, of which no film footage exists, like famous tenor Enrico Caruso, could be made to re-perform their successes in full motion. Or we could hear and see Abraham Lincoln speak, etc. Ethical questions will certainly need to be answered, especially when the AI becomes so good that it is impossible to determine whether the footage is fake or real. Dear fellow scholars, this is Two Minute Papers with Dr. Karo Jona Ifair. It is important for you to know that everybody can make deep fakes now. You can turn your head around, mouth movements are looking great, and eye movements are also translated into the target footage. A company that is heavily engaged in OpenAI and YouTube 
called Two Minute Papers already had to block an AI that converted anybody's face into the face of someone else due to criminal abuse. Recently, a symposium was held by iFilms in Amsterdam that focused on the question of restoration versus artistic reappropriation. So far, Peter Jackson's work on enhancing and colorizing his masterpiece, They Shall Not Grow Old, has been a role model for this YouTube channel. What we didn't realize was to what lengths Peter Jackson went to produce such wonderful results. There were some things that were changed um, completely. Uh, for instance, the bird in the sky here has been removed completely. Um, but uh, this area here, uh, if we look at the the same area and the new and the old, you'll see that um, at the back, the trees have changed, the fields at the back have changed, and actually uh, many of the buildings in the village have changed. Now, oddly enough, there didn't seem to be any reason for doing this, but it does highlight the fact that this is not taking the original footage and producing something that is closer to the original. This is actually creating something uh, that is fictionalized which is uh, not necessarily related to the original at all in certain aspects. Um, so I think that we can be very clear that um, what Peter Jackson did was use the original footage as a reference in order to make, in some cases, some completely new images that suited his requirements rather than got you closer to what was there originally. Jackson clearly overstepped the mark as regards the ethical limits to restoration. He reappropriated the original work by making it as attractive as possible for a large cinema audience. So much was changed in scenes that it had hardly anything anymore to do with the original black and white film. So what can be concluded about the ethics of AI film restoration and colorization? The answer is that it depends on the objectives of the restorer. If the objective is to entertain viewers, then there should not be many objections, as long as the restorer is skillful and has truly added value. From an educational perspective, there are also not many reasons to object if the restorer has focused on bringing out details that were hidden in the film before restoration commenced. From a historian's perspective, the answer is less decisive. Restoration should be without argument if the end result respects historic accuracy. The AI should only bring out hidden details that were already present in the source footage, or add new details provided they are based on fact and not the result of fantasies generated by the AI. For example, there should be nothing wrong in colorizing the American flag, because its shape and colors are clearly defined. Colorizing a flag, trams, trains, buses without the AI knowing what country is actually involved is historically unacceptable. The same applies to colorizing uniforms without knowing which army, rank and or war is involved. As the AIs become even more smart, the gap between what is historically acceptable versus unacceptable will narrow. However, restorers should accept that AIs will never reach perfection. Proper restoration should be historically acceptable, but reappropriation of footage definitely not.